What's up? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks for being here, being subbed. If you're not, hit the button. And if you're listening on YouTube, hit that like. It's like walking in the room and hitting that light switch. Let's brighten up the place and get into this Beautifully Honest reaction. Talk to me nice. Talk to me honestly. So listen, I'm gonna let y'all know this right now, okay? So you know trumpets, like y'all won, I, I know y'all happy, whatever the fuck. Ain't nobody acting like bitter losers. However, y'all need to leave me the fuck alone. Because I got one more fucking cigarette in me before I start lighting your asses up. Aight? And that's where to the United States of motherfucking America. Yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> I may not be a fan of Cardi B's music. I may have called her out on a number of occasions about things that I felt like, just stand down. It's not even worth a response or a comment, a pulse, and definitely not going live. But for this, I have to give her her kudos because I 100% agree with her. And she actually said exactly what I was already saying. Not the same words, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the truth, what she said. A lot of these die-hard Trump supporters, and when I say Trump supporters, there's a difference. There's a difference between these MAGA Trump supporters and people who just voted for Donald Trump because they felt like he was going to be more beneficial for their life, their livelihood, and their households more so than Kamala. We have to be honest about that. But the die-hard Trumpians, the worshipers, the cult, the MAGA maggots, are the ones that are so nasty about it that he was the one that was elected. How does that bring the country together? And that's why a lot of people are really saddened by the election. Because when it comes to Donald Trump and those who are so in that sinkhole of the Trump cult, they want to not just rub it in your face that he won, but they really want you to be angry. They want you to be frustrated. They want you to suffer. And it should not be like that in politics because we all live in this country. We all live in this nation. And he has done so much to divide that it doesn't make people who did not vote for him and who wanted to see Kamala win feel hopeful about the future of this nation because they really feel like he divides so much and he is just about himself and the people who will bow down and kiss the ring, so to speak, that there really is no place for a lot of people who are not going to do that. And so I'm, I 100% I agree with what Cardi B said. It's like, listen, you won. Congratulations. Applause to you for you getting your win because the person that you voted for was elected. But that doesn't mean you get the right to come at me and attack me or make fun of or clown me or whatever you're trying to do because you won, like that should be it, move on. Well, that's right, Brian. The d American people delivered a resounding victory for President Trump, and it gives him a mandate to govern as he campaigned, mm -hmm. to deliver on the promises that he made, which include on day one, launching the largest mass deportation operation of illegal immigrants that Kamala Harris has allowed into this country. It includes drill baby drill and expediting permits for nuclear, for fossil fuels, for an above all energy approach that's gonna bring down the cost of living in this country. Country. It includes on day one bringing Ukraine and Russia to the negotiating table to end this war and returning to the very tough sanctions on the Iranian regime so we can stop the chaos in the Middle East. The American people are clearly longing for the policies of Donald Trump. They despise the policies that the Harris Biden administration have implemented over the past four years. And the Harris Biden administration will go down as the worst, weakest, most corrupt administration in our nation's history. 
Well, you heard that. And listen, I can't even sit here and say that I feel sorry. I, I really can't. Because, like I said, a lot of people voted for what was not going to be the most beneficial for them. And while there are some Latinos who are legal immigrants or who were born here, they know either people who have come over here illegally or they may not even know them personally, but you identify with them because you come from or know someone that comes from where they come from. So if they voted for this man, they voted for what is to come for the people that look like them, but they wanted to identify with him. Some people said comments like, imagine voting for him and being on that first bus back across the border, shaking my head. Some other people are saying, black women, we're minding our business for the next four years. And another one said, this person, I was about to say what they said, but this person said, thanks for the vote. Now get out. Somebody else said, Latinos that voted for him kissed Tita and Tito on their cheek goodbye. And somebody else said, I hope he does everything he said he was going to do. Maybe then y'all will learn. Oof, it's it's deep, guys. And, and just hearing what she's saying is what he planned on doing and he had been saying this all along so it's you just have to sometimes you have to really learn the lessons by going through it not just by being warned that's all i can really say on that let me know what you think in the comments what's up y'all it's king Kong, and right now i'm taking over my pops instagram we're gonna be posting videos by spreading you know good energy and taking y'all down memory lane and all the positive things he did. So stay tuned and watch this. Let's go. We love you, Pops. Happy birthday. Listen, I don't know what that is about, but Diddy's son, Christian, I guess always known as King Combs, he's going to be taking over his dad's Instagram account and saying he wants to focus on the positive things he did and go down memory lane. I'm definitely sure that his dad has all of the things to do with this. I don't believe this was just his idea. But listen, I'm honestly thinking this is sort of strategic because now that Donald Trump has won and we know that there are plenty of pictures of Sean Combs and Donald Trump posted up together on The Apprentice when Aubrey was on The Celebrity Apprentice and she said that she, you know, had to do a lot when she worked with him and Donald Trump had nothing but respect and good things to say about Sean Combs. And he was like, I'm not going to let you talk about him because he's my friend. So I'm wondering, is this a way of getting into the eyes of Donald Trump to get geared up for a presidential pardon if he is convicted? I don't know. It's possible. But some people are saying, nobody want to see that bleep. Somebody said, but who asked for this? LMFAO boy, tell us what we want to know. Somebody else said, man, we don't give a F about your daddy. Somebody else said, that bleep is not going to work. My memory lane is that video of him beating Cassie. And listen, that's my point. You're trying to get people's minds off of what we know about him now to get it back on what we thought we knew of him then. And with all the stuff going on right now in the in this nation, with politics, a lot of people have PTSD from November the 5th and we don't know like what's really gonna happen next and we're just all trying to stay tuned, trying to stay hopeful, positive, focus on what's good. Ain't nobody trying to focus on your daddy. But I'm not even going to lie. If I was not looking at him, even though he looks like his dad, it's crazy how he sounds just like his dad. He sounds 
just like him. And that's really creepy, especially in light of the allegations that are out there against him too, of allegedly SAing a young woman on a yacht. So um, you all let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for being here, liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and I'm gonna say bye. Thank you.